Outrocast. Hey, Emil, aside from having to speak to me, how is your day going so far? It's going good. It's cool to talk to people about this movie. Right. When did you actually finish this film? Because we, the general public, first learned about it. I'd say February is when the trades kind of leaked that it was coming out. Well, um, I guess we shot it in December of 2020. Wow. So this uh, played into the idea that filming should have been smaller casts and less people in the room together. That kind of worked out well. Yeah, it was a very uh, COVID friendly production, although I guess we got a little too friendly because a bunch of people on the crew got it as we were shooting inevitable but uh the premise of the film i guess it's a sci-fi thriller of sorts is really intense it's one of those things where you say to the average person they'd start to think oh what would i do in this situation for you did you go method at all to do this kind of a premise or did the script give you all the work you know fortunately for me the script um really gave me everything i needed and I didn't have time to do any kind of uh, methody kind of stuff because I was shooting another film called State of Consciousness in Guatemala at the time. Wow. Um, and I wrapped on a Friday and I was shooting State of Consciousness on Monday morning in L.A. So I literally got back to Los Angeles and before I knew it was just wearing new clothes, playing a totally different character and was like, whoa, what's going on? And wow. it was just learning the material as quickly as I could. And I think that this performance, maybe more so than almost any I've done, is just me kind of just leaning on my instincts to a, a ridiculous degree and, you know, in a way kind of turning my brain off, just riding my instincts. That actually leads to two or three things that I wanted to ask about. Now, your musical endeavors are under the name Mnemonic. And memorization of scripts is not something I can do, not something most people can do. And as you just mentioned, you were kind of making two films at the same time. Memorization of the script, does that come to you very easy? Is the band name not just clever, that's actually a big part of what you do? Well, um, you know, yeah, I'm, for some reason, I don't know, like learning material has never, it's never really been a thing for me. Um, especially when the lines are good, you can learn, you can learn very fast and mm, people have an idea about learning dialogue in general that is um, not really accurate. Uh, when you really like just jump into the deep end of learning a lot of lines and a lot of material, mm -hmm. um, I think most people might even be surprised at how um, they they might even be able to do it better than they might think. Hmm. Obviously not as good as someone like me. This guy. But no, maybe they could. You never know. You know? Yeah. Got it. Um, I think a lot of people, a lot of people think it's harder than it is. Cause because I always tell people, I'm like, you ever go to an elementary school play of like Hamlet? They those kids know their lines. And they're like eight years old. So how hard could it really be? Fair. And then you have the people like me who don't like to do anything twice. So, you know, when people think about being a stand-up comic, I think it's got to be a fearful thing that you have to do that same joke every time, like it's the first time you did it. Oh, yeah. In your case, can you stomach doing take after take? Or are you just so good? It's one take, next, print it twice. Mm, if I have the time, a lot of the times I'll like to do a bunch of takes. If I have the time, very rarely do I have, do we have the time, you know, but if, if I have like unlimited time, I'll sit and I'll do 12 takes, you know what I mean? Fincher style. Got it. <laughs> um, in so immaculate room, very emotionally involved role, but are you at this point where your life is not turned upside down when you have an emotional role like this, that they say cut and like 60, 90 seconds later, you can breathe and crack a joke? Yeah, I think, I think, unfortunately, I've hit that stage in my life where I'm no longer like the actor that's like sleeping in a coffin at lunch if he's playing a vampire, you know what I mean? Fair. Um, 
the catch 22 of course though is that when you get to that point you're inevitably a better actor than before that's the irony well said well the film that you made in guatemala not the only film that you've made in the last two three years you know when you look at your imdb page it's like six things coming out and we don't know if those things are true but are you allowed to say what's next after the immaculate room yeah i've shot a bunch of movies recently um oh so many projects that i'm so excited about um this film um called devil's workshop that i worked on is coming out at the end of september as is this other film i did with thomas jane called dig which is a really cool thriller um those are just the next two and also state of consciousness and this movie i'm very excited about called the gemini lounge and the stenographer and the engineer there's all these different movies and i've just made a bunch of films in the last few years and some of them should have came out by now so they got a little delayed so it seems like there's more movies maybe than normal or something that or you're in demand all these years later one or the other now does dig have the exclamation point in it like the dandy warhols documentary dig no no it doesn't that was a good documentary too no <laughs> this is one. um this is a uh, crazy crazy little thriller i play a really evil redneck but funny very darkly funny funny but evil mm. yeah that sometimes one. they go together <laughs> well i i think that you have shown your versatility where you could do comedy, you could do drama, you can do horror. This movie says, hey, the man can do thriller, but I got a music question or two for you. Do we have more music in the pipeline or is that on hold because you're doing so many damn movies? Well, we have, you know, we put a couple of albums out under Hirsch. Our album, the first album name was Mnemonic. And it's me and this other guy who's this French dude named the Frenchman, AKA Mathieu Caratier. And, um, you know, we make these songs basically at his computer in his living room. It's really an unglamorous process. And he has like a little microphone and we put a sheet over it and I sing these stuff. And then he melodines and auto tunes the vocals like beyond, but you could imagine it's like disgusting. Um, and yeah, we've put out a couple of albums and, you know, we got pretty good like people responded to a lot of the music yeah. but i mean it's like stuff we put out on the internet you know it's like um people are like oh were you weird did you feel weird about putting out music because of your acting career and like how that could affect your acting career and i was like if enough people hear this music to where it actually affects my acting career i'm gonna like be through the moon because right promoting promoting music is the hardest thing imaginable you could literally scream. You could go to like Times Square and scream at the top of your lungs and no one would notice if, it, if, if it's music related. It's like the hardest industry to get any traction in. That's why I'm like, yeah, put it out. It doesn't matter. No one, no one will hear it. Well, you're underselling the putting it out on the internet because what is putting out music on Spotify? That's putting it on the internet. You just go through TuneCore or WizKid or one of those and it's on the internet. So I'm yeah. putting yourself short there. No, no. I mean, but even then, like you, you put it on the internet. I mean, maybe you get total 10,000 people a month around the world listening. I mean, that's a very, very, very small audience. In terms of music, but if you were a dentist and you had 10,000 patients, you'd be doing pretty damn well. So yeah, I'd be a billionaire. <laughs> so uh, down to the last uh, question here. And in the spirit of the Immaculate Room, when I was a kid, you'd get those tower records catalogs and they go, you're desert island discs. Uh, this premise of this movie, you're kind of stuck in this room for 30 days or so. Do you yeah. have those two or three albums where you go, that is what I'd bring to the room and, and only listen to? Oh, wow, yeah. Maybe, um, gosh, it's, it's, so, it's such a hard thing to say because you realize as soon as you say it, you would, like grow to hate it you know what i mean so i'm like oh i bring a smashing pumpkins like melancholy and the infinite sadness and then i'm like but then i would no longer like that album because you would grow to hate it 
because you would listen to it like so much. Then again, it's a double album. So technically you cheated in a good way. Yeah, you were like weaseling your way into like six albums. Um, Gosh, that's tricky. Uh, Maybe Smashing Pumpkins or I don't know. It's hard because it's like any album. It's like I can't listen to it that much. Van Halen one. Oh man. No. Well, <laughs> the next time I interview you, I'll come back for those other discs. But in the meantime, congratulations on this movie happening and looking forward to everything that's come from you, even if you're an evil redneck. Thank you so much. And <laughs> what is this room you're in? It looks really cool. Oh yeah, the living room, the dining room in this beach town. Uh, they used to send out the eight and a half by 11 uh, headshots. So you always got them and there's Gallagher and Dice Clay and David Lee Roth and Wayne Newton. Wow. But I, I guess we need a headshot from you to put next to Ted Nugent on the wall. Oh yeah, rad. <laughs> well, seriously, thank you for your time. Thanks for making this happen, Adriana. Thank you, thank you, thank Thanks you, thank you, Darren. Outro.